Today we are going to discuss equity and pot odds. Because if you understand these two concepts, you'll be able to figure out if any poker situation you are in is profitable or unprofitable. And if you can figure out if a situation is profitable or unprofitable, you'll be able to make the best play possible, which will allow you to make better decisions than your opponents. And if you make better decisions than your opponents, you will make more money from poker. Let's get right to it. All poker math fundamentals begin with equity and expected value. These two concepts are similar, or similar, but a little bit different. And I want to make sure you understand the difference. Equity is how often you will win the pot, assuming you get to the showdown. So, for example, say you have ace-king and I have nine-seven. In the situation, the ace-king is going to win about 64% of the time. That means you have 64% equity and I have 36% equity. Okay. Expected value is how much a decision is expected to win or lose in the long run. So equity is how often you will win. Expected value is how much you will win. Let's discuss how you go about calculating your expected value. Well, your expected value equals the percentage of the time you win times the amount you win plus the percentage of the time you lose times the amount you lose. This will be a negative number. So let's say on the turn, your opponent goes all in for $100 into a $200 pot. And let's just presume you know that you're going to win 30% of the time because you have some sort of a draw. And if you make your draw, you'll always have the best hand. So in this situation, your expected value is 0 0.3, 30%. That's how often you will win, times the amount you win. How much do you win here? Well, the pot was 200 and your opponent's putting 100 more into it. So in this scenario, you're winning 300. So 0.3 times 300 plus... 70% of the time, when you lose, when you don't complete your draw, you lose the $100 that you have to call. So you solve for this, you get 90 minus 70, which is $20 profit to call in this situation. And this is how you go about figuring out all sorts of scenarios like this. Let's discuss the concept of equity realization, though. Equity realization is how much of your actual equity you realize because you're not always just going to be all in right? You're not always going to get to the showdown. And your equity realization is your expected value divided by your equity. And essentially, if it's greater than 100%, it means that you're going to over-realize your equity. And this is usually going to be the case when you have the positional advantage and when your range is just way stronger than your opponent's. And alternatively, if it's less than 100%, it's going to mean that you are going to be under-realizing your equity. For example, let's go back to the ace-king against the 9-7. If I raise with ace-king from first position and you call a 9-7 in the big blind and the flop comes anything without a 9 or a 7, you're going to check, I'm going to bet, and you're going to fold. But if I don't have a pair and you don't have a pair, you're, you're still going to win some portion of the time. So I'm taking that equity away from you by betting. You're going to be under-realizing your equity from out of position. Even if you make a pair, say it comes queen-jack-7 and you have the 9-7 and I bet the flop and you call and I bet the turn and you call and I blast the river and you fold. I just made you under-realize your equity, okay? Typically, when you are in position, you're going to over-realize your equity, and when you're out of position, you're going to under-realize your equity. This is a concept that you need to be very aware of in-game, but you don't need to be trying to calculate this. You just need to be aware of situations where you are under-realize and under -re over-realize and under-realize your equity, and that will generally help drive your overall strategies, okay? That said, let's discuss some math that you do need to actually be doing at the table. And that is your pot odds. When you are facing a bet, you have to risk some amount of money or chips to win some other amount of money or chips. And if you will win the pot more often than your pot odds dictate you should, you should be continuing in the pot. And if you're going to win less often than your pot odds dictate you should, you should fold unless you are running a bluff, in which case you're not making money purely based on your hand strength and making money because your opponent will fold too often or at least some chunk of the time. Let's discuss how to convert odds to percentages. Pot odds are traditionally expressed as the amount you win to the amount you are risking. Okay? Let's go through an example. If your opponent bets 100 into 100 pots, you have to call 100 to win 200, right? So you're putting in 100 to win the $100 your opponent bet plus the $100 pot. You're putting in one to try to win two. This gives you 200 to 100 odds, which can be simplified by chopping off the zeros here. 
as two to one odds. Okay, but that doesn't clearly tell me how often I need to win. In order to convert the odds, like two to one, to a percentage, you divide the second number, the one, by the first number plus the second number, which would be two plus one. So second number divided by second number plus first number is 100 divided by 100 plus 200, which is 100 divided by 300, which is one third, okay? A lot of people look at two to one pot odds and think that means you need to win 50%. They divide the second number by the first number, but no, 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 no. It's the first number divided by the first number plus the second number, which makes sense if you think about it, right? Because we're putting in one to win a total of three, right? One third. So if we're gonna win more than a third of the time, we should stick around in this pot. And if we're gonna win less than a third of the time, we should not stick around in this pot. Let's go through an example. We'll take this one slowly. You can do it yourself. Let's say your opponent bets 100 into a 400 pot, okay? You have to call 100 to win a total of 500, the 400 pot plus their 100, right? Which gives us 500 to 100 odds, which can be simplified to five to one. So what percentage of the time do we need to win in this situation? Take a second, fill in the blanks. I'll wait for you. While you're doing it, do me a favor, click the like and subscribe button down below. Click the notification bell. I appreciate it. Well, the second number is 100 divided by the second number, which is 100, plus the first number, which is 500. So this is 100 divided by 600. One divided by six is 16.8%, which is not a whole lot. So in this scenario, when your opponent makes a tiny bet, you only need to win 16.8% of the time to justify sticking around in this situation. And well, a lot of hands will. Let's go through another example. Let's say your opponent bets 1,500 into an 8,000 pot. In this spot, you have to call 1,500 to win 9,500, giving you 9,500 to 1,500 odds, which is roughly 6.3 to one. So convert 6.3 to one to a percentage. Do it, go ahead, do the same process. Well, we have 1,500 divided by 1,500 plus 9,500, which is 13.6%. Again, we're facing a tiny bet. We don't need to win all that often. What if instead the opponent bet 8,000 into the 8,000 pot? You know how often you need to win then? Take a second, think about it. We already did this. Well, then we'd have to put an eight to win a total of 24, so we need to win a third of the time, okay? Long story short, as you face smaller bets, you have to continue more often. And as you face larger bets, you have to continue less often. This is something that I think a lot of people intuitively understand, but a lot of people don't in practice. I mean, on the river, quite often people think if my opponent bets bigger, they're probably trying to buy the pot, so I should call more often. And to be fair, if your opponent does drastically over bluff using big bet sizes, that could be the case. But in general, when people bet bigger and bigger and bigger, you should be folding more and more and more often because you're getting worse and worse pot odds. Let's take a look at these common pot odds you definitely want to be aware of. If you're getting four to one, you need to realize at least 20% of the pot. If you're getting three to one, you need to realize 25%. If you're getting two to one, which is when your opponent pots it, you need to realize 33%. And then if your opponent bets more than the size of the pot, like 1.5 to one, well, now you need to realize 40%. And if somehow, some way, the pot has $0 in it and your opponent bets a ton, or even any amount, $1, you only need to win, well, you need to win 50% of the time because in that scenario, you're putting in one unit to win your opponent's one unit, right? This will not happen in No Limit Texas Hold'em because there's always a pot. But essentially, you have to realize that you don't need to win all that often when your opponent is making small and medium bets. And this is actually why a lot of the best poker players will make frequent small bets because people will fold just a little bit too often. It is easy to fold more than, let's say, 80% of the time. I'm sorry, more than 20% of the time. It's easy to fold more than 20% of the time whenever you're facing a small bet because it basically means you're just folding your total trash. And a lot of people will fold hands like ace high and bottom pair, even do a small bet, and that's gonna result in them completely getting ran over. All right, so now that we know common pot odds, you need to be able to convert your outs to odds. This is when you have a drawing hand and you have to figure out how often should I 
continue? And should I continue? Well, let's say you have Jack 10 of hearts on a board of ace of hearts, queen of hearts, four of diamonds, jack of spades. And let's say your opponent has ace, queen of diamonds. Well, how will you know that? You probably won't know that in game. But for this hypothetical, let's consider it. Well, how many outs do we have? Take a second, count them. Well, we can get any heart, right? There are nine hearts. There are also three additional kings. There's not four kings because we already counted one of them in the hearts. So nine plus three is 12. Plus we can get two jacks, right? Two jacks will make trips. And that gives us 14 outs, okay? So now that we know we have 14 outs, you can use this slightly oversimplified, a slightly inaccurate method to figure out how often you will improve on the next card, or if there were two cards to come with two cards to come. If you're on the flop, meaning you're going to get to see the turn and the river, you multiply the number of outs you have by four, and that will give you roughly the percentage of the time you'll improve to a strong hand. If you're on the turn, you multiply your number of outs by two because you're only going to get to see one card. This is called the rule of two and four, or four and two. And in this scenario, if we have 14 outs, we multiply that by two because we're on the turn, go into the river, we're going to get there about 28% of the time. So let's say in our situation, our opponent bet the size of the pot on the turn. And that was all in. And they turned their hand up. And we saw they had that ace queen. And there's no more money to go in on the river. If that's the case, we should actually fold this very good draw. Pair and flush draw and gut shot straight draw. Because we're only going to win 28% of the time. What if instead your opponent bets... 25% pot though. Well, now we need to win very infrequently, right? We know we're going to win 28% of the time. In that scenario, we should be sticking around because now we're facing such a small bet to the point that we can stick around. And you're going to find that there are sometimes scenarios when your opponent's betting really small that you have to stick around quite wide. Now, that's presuming we're all in on the turn. What if instead your opponent bet $100 into the $100 pot on the turn, but there was $500 remaining in your stack? that could go in on the river. Well, now we have this concept of implied odds, which we're not gonna be discussing today, but essentially in this scenario, we're putting in our money a little bit bad right now with the idea that we have the potential to win a whole lot more money on the river if we do improve to the best hand. And in this scenario on ace, queen, four, jack, if we get a low heart on the river, we're kind of likely to get paid off. Now, if we get a king on the river, such as there's a four straight on the board, it's gonna be a little bit hard to get paid off. If we get a jack, well, maybe we get paid off, maybe we don't. But on the low hearts, we're definitely going to get paid off for some decent amount of money. And that will allow you to call in a lot of scenarios and no limit hold them, even when you're not getting the correct immediate pot odds because you can expect to win more money on the later betting rounds. So that's it. That's it for today. Thank you for being here. Good luck in your games. I hope this video helped you understand equity and pot odds a little bit better. If you have a friend who struggles with these concepts, send them this video. I know there's a lot in this video. You may need to go back and rewatch it. Take it slow. And if you consistently practice figuring out your equity and your pot odds, eventually it's going to become second nature to you. And a lot of situations that may be giving you trouble today will become routine for you. And you'll know how to play them much well with practice. Good luck. Have fun. And I'll talk to you next time.